Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the X Jaguar MIDI Quad Kit. Apologies in advance for taking a while to get this video out, but as you know, I've been a little bit busy. So let's get straight to it. So this is the X Jaguar Mini Quad from FlyPro, and it's sold as a complete kit apart from your radio gear. So let's see what components we've got inside. First of all, we have a 25 milliwatt up to 200 milliwatt video transmitter and OSD board. We also have a PDB with an XT60 on there. This also includes 30 amp speed controllers. FlyPro's own F3 flight controller a set of four 5045 tri-blades, four 2206 2300 kb motors that are rated to pull 1300 grams, a run cam swift camera with 2.8 lens, a VTX pigtail with a small racing whip antenna. Lifting the top section out reveals even more goodies inside, including an LED board with built-in buzzer, all of the associated cables, a cable for adjusting the camera, antenna protectors, screws, nuts and standoffs, a 1300-100C 4-cell LiPo, 4 arms, 2 Jaguar shaped side plates, 4 motor protectors and the rest of the frame parts. There's a nice bit of attention to detail with all the parts with the matching red colours. The motors themselves certainly do look the part and they have a very nice smooth turn to them. Personally I'm not a big fan of the power stacks ever since I had the TBS power cubes but we'll see how these stack up. So I'm going to start the build where I start most of my builds and that's with sticking the motors onto the arms. Just don't forget to put the motor protectors on these as well. The arms are specific to the motors as well so if you find that the motor isn't screwing in then flip the arm around. Something else worth noting is that the motors are clockwise and counterclockwise so when you're doing the build make sure that you put them in the correct place. And you can tell which is which by simply putting the nuts on the top. So now we're going to start to assemble the frame itself by attaching the arms onto the bottom plate. First of all we're going to put the screws through the bottom plate up through and then we're going to grab our aluminium cross and thread the screws into that. And you can just repeat the process until you have the bottom plate sorted like this. Now it's time to attach the PDB and ESCs onto the bottom here. We're going to use the very long screws to actually hold this in place. And it's worth making sure you put this on the right way. So the way I'm installing it here with the gold tabs on the top that you're going to sold the motors onto. And the motor wires just go across to the M1, M2, M3 and M4 tabs that you see here. So just cut them to length. Tin up the cut wires. Also tin the ESC pads. Now the ESC pads are very close together so just take care when you're soldering so you don't do this and connect two of the pads together as this will be very bad but as you can see with a quick swipe you'll be able to just desolder these and continue the process until all of the motor wires are soldered on it might be worth crossing over two of the wires on the motors two and three so that they spin in the counterclockwise direction I assumed that the flight controller would be able to do BL heli pass through so I could change the motor direction in software but it wasn't the case. You can then go ahead and cover the wires with a bit of tape because you don't want them flopping around in the props. We can then start building up our stack. To be honest I would have done this step first and put these washers down just to stop the ESC boards coming up whilst you're soldering. The stack goes from bottom upwards with the PDB and ESCs, then the flight controller and the OSD and VTX on the very top. And we can then cap it off with the provided bolts. Take care when putting these on that you don't break off any of the LEDs that are very close to the edges of the board. We can then grab our top plate and add the camera mount onto it with the provided screws and nuts. It should then look something like this. Then attach the pigtail for the VTX. And then start to assemble this on the Jaguar side plates. It's probably worth also sticking in the cable for the camera because it's a little bit harder later on. You can also stick the LED board with the buzzer on it at the rear here, also sticking the cables into the back of that too. But I just used a pair of long nose pliers to connect it. And this was the cable I used to connect the buzzer LED board. If you have a micro receiver then it's probably worth trying to jam that up somewhere up behind the camera. I'm using some micro receivers that do actually fit inside this so that's quite nice. The camera then plugs into the very front of the OSD VTX board here 
Looking at the rear of the stack, we can then plug in the LED buzzer board. This goes into the right plug you see here on the rear of that. And then finally push the pigtail down onto the VTX. As I said, if you do have a micro receiver, then it's worth fitting that inside there before you try and close all this up. You can also see here that the side plates will foul on the USB. So you will need to back off the screws on the standoff so that it widens out slightly and goes around it. But you can see even though I was taking care, I did bend the USB slightly there. But there is enough room for you to get a USB cable inside now. You can then hold that whole top plate down using one of the screws and nuts by screwing the screw from the bottom up to the top. I'm a Futaba person so I'm going to be using S-Bus so I'm going to use this cable here to connect to my receiver. This simply plugs into the rear of the quad and then onto your receiver. I decided to actually solder the wires from this connector onto my micro receiver just for a more reliable connection. As I mentioned though, I'll probably do the receiver part whilst the top plate is already off so you can hide it inside here. And now as you can see we're really starting to look the part with this little mini quad. So time to power up for the first time. Now what you may notice here is that the voltage on the bottom left hand side is being shown incorrectly. It was shown something like 9 volts so I did panic at first. Also the OSD says you need to put your throttle to middle and your to the right then pitch up to actually enter the OSD to change some of the settings but this isn't working. If you have the same problem with your X Jaguar, then just go into Clean Flights, click on the ports, and then on UR2, select the MSP here. If this is deselected, you will get that problem that I had there, so click the MSP and click Save. Also, if you are using SBUS like me, on the ports tab, select the serial on UR3. Then on the receiver tab, go and select the SBUS option and save. You can then go ahead and set up the rest of the settings just how you normally like them in clean flight. Personally I was going to include beta flight on this but I thought I'd keep it stock for the first few flights. And so through to our first test flight and as you'll see she manages to take off quite smoothly on the stock pids. The LEDs are working as they should be doing left and right blinking if I'm turning left or right. The OSD is now working also and so is the beeper. So that's it for the build video of the X Jaguar frame. I will be back with part two when we take this outside and start to fly it around and push it through its paces. So thanks for watching guys, I'll be back soon.